Among the Scythians by Deborah L. Davitt Copper, so expensive, so rare. Did you know that the sun-bright ore only comes from a distant island in a sun-bathed sea that will never see, where it's so common that the people there walk on streets made of it? That the tin blended with it to make sturdy bronze comes from another island. They say it's on the moon. This one made of ice, cloaked in fog. And it's carried on boats, and then on horseback, hand to hand to hand, till it finally reaches us. Scraps enough to make needle-pointed arrowheads, nothing more. There are no roads here, just the faint tracks where our herds walked last year, the year before, the year before that, and we followed, our dogs keeping the horses and the cattle from straying too far. A road is only a dream in my chieftain father's eyes, the memory of where we've always gone before. Only kings have enough wealth to deck themselves in armor alloyed of sun and moon. My father's not a king, nor am I. Chieftains like him can only afford wooden shields, breastplates of linden wood, still costly, still dear. There are few trees on the steps. Our weapons aren't just for show. Tales abound of the perils faced by lone travelers, of young lovers bound for one village or another who never arrived, a young bride stolen, a young groom slain by roving bands. The stranger from another clan was always our most dangerous foe, the worst penalty that could be imposed, exile. No one would trust someone turned out of the safety of another caravan. They'd be alone forever. Young warriors are encouraged to demonstrate their courage by lightning raids on other tribes and herds. But there are rules. Prisoners can be ransomed. Slaves can be freed and no one has to die. My own mother loved to reminisce about how my father kidnapped her from a meeting of the clans, all with a wink and a nod, and her father's feigned reluctance, her shrieks of feigned outrage as she bounced over the withers of his horse, the secret jealousy of her sisters at the outrageous romance of it all. Her needles came with her from her clan, splinters of bone patiently bored through with the fine tip of a flint tool points of our spears bone, too, the whipstock in my hand, leather-wrapped bone. What we have is just our flesh, the bodies of our herds, one with our own. Raiders came in the night to steal our herds. That's common enough, but they had sun-metal swords and needle-pointed arrows. Why did they need to take when they already had so much? Maybe stealing was just easier than waiting endlessly for foals and calves to grow. Perhaps they were just bored of the whole cycle of living. I don't know, but as I hold my father as he shakes and screams, I didn't know that even a big man can sob in pain, that a chief can be afraid of death, that my father was mortal. I didn't want to know that. I didn't want to have to know. I didn't want to know what it would be like to be in exile, alone in the world as a ghost, Except I was never cast out. I simply didn't follow my kin into the shadowed lands that lie beyond this life. But what I also know is that the skull of a slaughtered bull will make a fine helmet, that the ribs of my brother's horse will shelter my body, that the finger bones of my father's hand, my mother's, of my brother's, will rattle in my pouch, sounding like the susurration of ghostly speech and that all the arrows that the raiders left behind, tangled in ribs, embedded in skulls, melted down, will make a sword, fit, if not for a king, then at least for vengeance. <laughs>